Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lawrence Lee. All right, good afternoon, guys. Can you guys hear me? We're okay? All right. So how many of you guys actually go back and take a look at the trades that you've done over the past, let's say, even, even, as much, even as far back as just the start of this year? Anybody actually go back and take a look at their trades? Most people, what do they do? Yes, second. Most people, you just trade, and then mahala na. Right? Tawag namin dun, if you're watching the video, it's called bahala na trading. Di ba? Eh, eh, ang input mo, bahala na. Ang output mo, bahala na rin. Okay. How many people here, if you feel sick, go to the hospital? How many people here dread going to the hospital? Because you're afraid of what you will find out. You guys ever think about that? Like, there are people na, I, I know a lot of people who are, they just don't want to be in a hospital because they're afraid na baka may mangyayari sa kanila. Right? But you know there's a problem. You feel sick, you feel unwell, pero magmamatigas ka pa rin kasi ayaw mo malaman kung ano yung sakit mo. And what you don't realize is that by figuring out what's causing you to be sick, it allows you to go back and check and you can take medication or whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel better. Okay? So how does this apply to your trading? How many of you guys here are losing money in your portfolios? I'm, I'm sure there are some. I'm, I'm hoping it's not all, but I'm sure there are some. Right? How many of you guys actually tried to figure out why you're losing money in your portfolios? I don't see as many hands as as I saw earlier, right? That means that if you guys are already losing money, how do we go back and figure out the things that we need to change in order for us to be able to go from bleeding back to positive, right? So what we're gonna be talking about this afternoon is the tools that I'm gonna be helping you with in order for you to make the proper adjustments in your own trading, that's one, and two, how to go back and analyze why you made those mistakes. So I'm going to be giving you the tools. So the first tool that I already gave this morning was the, the trading performance analyzer. Tama? Right? So I'll show the QR code again um, later, but I want you guys to keep that handy because we're going to be talking about it at length this afternoon. Okay? A second. All right. So numbers don't lie. We all have to face the music sometime. If you're sick, you gotta figure out why you're, why you're sick, and hopefully you can find out the reasons how to make yourself feel better. This is the same, okay? So let's start. In any journey that an individual takes, there's always a destination. We always want to get somewhere at the end of what we're doing, right? And we always have to understand the means of us getting there whether that is range trading, whether that is reversal trading, or last year was momentum or position, you have to understand the means of how to get there. But here's the thing. Just because you understand the means towards the journey, what happens? You will always have setbacks. You will always have pitfalls. You will always have um, adversity that will face you front and center. And that is why we need some semblance of a guide, all right? So our destination is our trading goals. What do we want to achieve? 20% return, are you guys happy with 20% return? 30% return, 50% return, 100% return a year, right? Some goals are lofty, some goals are never gonna be achievable. There are gonna be real realistic goals. So what's important here is that you, for yourself, can set those goals. If you guys want to trade for a living, but you have no idea how much you expect what are realistic goals, what's the point? Right? You will always think that, oh, I'm going to be day trading. Sabi kasi nila, 
70% return ng day trading eh. Right? But you yourself are struggling and you continue to lose on a year-to-year -year basis. Is that 70% a year realistic? Right? You have to set realistic goals and then be able to take the necessary adjustments, make the necessary steps to now say, okay, I've achieved my 15% goal for the year. I'm going to set that to 20% next year. If you hit the 20% bar, next year you, ad you adjust again, 25%. Right? So those are your trading goals. Knowledge is the means of getting to those, being able to achieve those goals. Right? And what we're talking about this afternoon is the, is the compass that allows us to say, okay, where are we messing up? Do we need to make adjustments? That's what data analytics is for. That's what review is for, right? So data analytics basically creates uniformity for goal setting, benchmarking, and peer review, right? Notice it says there, peer review. It means hindi ka lang mag-isa. How come? If you notice, especially at Kalem, and the number one reason why Kalem is so powerful today is because of the trading community that it builds, right? The alumni, associate, the alumni of Kalem constantly get updates and are able to come back on a, on a quarterly basis to come together and to watch over each other's back. If you're not going to join Kilim, I want you guys to encourage you guys to be able to build some semblance of community for you guys to watch over one another. The biggest pitfall of the trade of my trading team historically, before the last, I think the last eight to nine years, was because we did not have that level of accountability. We did not have that watching over one another aspect, right? So we have a team of risk managers that are separately not trading, and are, all they do is, and they're dedicated to pulling our traders out of the water if we run into problems. So here's the thing. That's one, the peer review. You and another individual have to come together and say, on an objective, objectively come and say, can I go and help you? How do I help you? How do we help one another? Because if you are by yourself, you will lie to yourself. Okay pa to, okay pa to. May problema na hindi, okay lang yan. Right? How many of you guys still holding on to your CHP today? How many of you guys still holding on to surpass today? Right? These guys are down how many percent? 80, 90 percent today. Pero para sa inyo, hindi, okay lang yan. Nobody is going to come and tell you, hey, this is a problem, you gotta get out. Okay? So that's one. Benchmarking. What does benchmarking mean? Benchmarking, how do you know whether you're doing your job? How do you know, in terms of my personal capability, whether I've achieved the goal that I've set for myself? Right? If one, if you don't set a goal, obviously you don't know whether you've done well or not. Diba? So example, sabihin ko sa sarili ko, I want to lose weight. How many of you want to lose weight? Okay, how do you know if you've lost weight? How do you know if you lost weight? If you don't step on the scale and figure out how much you weigh. Tama? Right? Pwede ka naman sabihin, hindi, feeling ko pumayat na ako eh. I mean, how many of us do that, right? Hindi, hindi ako kumain na tatlong araw, mapayat na ako eh. That's like my dad. Right? Sorry. <laughs> right? So, you have to have a perspective of where you are standing today. And you won't know that unless you go back and look at your numbers. Okay? So we talked about gold setting at the very beginning, right? Am I, do I want to make 15% a year? Do I want to make 20? Can I even make 15% a year? Is this a number that's achievable for me? Do I know? I don't know. Am I even making money? Alam ko ba o hindi? O dahil nagde-deposit ako sa COL account ko, parang lumalaki naman yung laman eh. Right? I mean, I'm okay with that, but I don't think you're okay with that. And you guys should know. All right? So that's the first thing. The next. Data analytics indicates when you are straying away from the process. Okay, what does this mean? When you say the process, you guys ever heard the, the term trust the process? Right? We actually sell t-shirts, trust the process. Okay? Okay, I am not a Sixers fan. Okay, so anyways. Trust the process. Right? What does that mean? Okay, 
We have what we call on, on, in, at, CD, uh, at CTS, what we have is what we call best and worst trade. Okay? So normally, if you guys have to go back and figure out what is your best trade, how do you find it? How do you find it? You will always just go back and find the most profitable trade, and you will say, that is my best trade. Normal, right? Now here's the thing. What if that trade was because you bought it and the next day it got acquired by some company and it was up 70%? Was it luck? Absolutely. Can you replicate it? No. So you, now you're patterning your trade, ideal trade, on something hindi mo maulit. So the next trades that you're looking for are trades that you'll never ever see again. That you cannot find the criteria that you're looking for. So how do you move forward? So your process of finding a trade is something you'll never find. Okay? So what's important is that you understand how you are making your money. Did I make my money from ranges? Did I make my money from reversals? You have to go back and take a look and say, okay, it's reversals pala. That's my bread and butter. I have to continue to trade this formation. Is it momentum? If you're a momentum guy, you have to make sure that that's the formation that you know in your heart, based on the trades that you've seen, the, these are the trades that I'm good at. Make sense? Next. Data analytics alerts you to make changes in your system. How many of you guys know whether or not you've lost five straight trades? Do you guys know? How many of you guys know if you've lost eight, nine, ten straight trades? Parang feeling ko lang marami akong mali, pero hindi ko lang kung ilan. Right? Yung pala, you con you're continuously making mistakes over and over again, pero hindi ka natututo. Right? Last, data analytics heightens self-awareness of trading tendencies and bad habits. Okay, ano ibig sabihin nito? You know how they say, "Fool me once, say shame on you; fool me twice, shame on me." You guys ever heard that? Or the "Don't repeat the same mistake again." How many of you guys going back in your trading and made the same mistake over and over again? Do you guys know? You guys will not know unless you go back and look at your trades. This is why it's so important. The time that I went back and started reviewing all my trades, my trading performance skyrocketed. This is fact. Right? Do you know where you're making your money or do you even know where you're losing your money? You don't know. You don't go back and look at your trades. This is why we go back and look at it. Because now you will say, I've seen this before. Hindi ako makita dyan. Hindi ko na uulitin. Make sense? Okay, next. <clears throat> this is how we process data analytics. So we start with the, with the top left one. Find drivers of performance and craft a plan. Remember yung nilagay ko sa umpisa? FTSR, pre-trade, everything that happens before you enter the submit button. This is it. You have to craft a plan. You have to know why you are trading a stock. Hindi pwede sinabi lang ni Juanes sa akin, bibiling ko na. Right? Where sometimes we're like that. Nakita ko sa Facebook, okay to. Sige, enter na natin. You didn't even bother to come and make a decision on your own without any level of, of, of um, ownership towards that purchase. Pero kung natalo ka, sino may kasalanan? Yung tao na nakinig ka sa Facebook, siya may kasalanan? O ikaw may kasalanan na nakikinig ka? Just because someone says something doesn't mean that it's, you will make money off of it. Remember that. You always have to take every level of ownership because if you don't make money, who suffers the consequences? You. Right? That's why this is so important. Craft your plan. Find the reason where you're making mo your money and make a plan. Right? You have to rationalize why you are here. 
You guys are coming here not because you're casual individuals that just want to makikinig lang kayo. Maybe. But the ones that we'll really take away from this program, from these talks today, are the ones that really want to do this. Not maybe not full time, but improve their trading performance. Okay? Rationalize why are you doing it in the first place. Which brings us to the next one. Execute, review, and reflect. Find your bearings and assess if you are going in the right direction. Remember, we always say na, yung analogy namin, wag mo hawakan yan mainit. Wag mo hawakan yan mainit. Okay? Pero alam ba ninyo ang ibig sabihin na mainit kung hindi nyo hinawakan yan? Right? If I don't touch it, I will not know what hot really means. So here's the thing. We always want you to still experience everything that you are learning. That's why execution is still the most important. On my trading team, I mandate them to execute. Whether right or wrong, it doesn't matter. How come? One, you have risk management anyway. That means that if you're wrong, you know how much you're losing. Right? So you're mentally prepared. You know how much is at stake. So I'm okay. I'm comfortable with that. Right? Two, you already now are learning the things that you're doing wrong. It's inevitable. You ever seen a kid stand up, walk, and never fall down? It's never, it's not, that doesn't happen. The kid will eventually fall down. And it's inevitable for you to let the kid learn how to fall down because that when the kid falls down, he also knows how to stand back up. You need to experience these things firsthand. We can give you all of these things, but if you're not going to come back and try to learn what Juanes is teaching earlier about trading ranges or the other, the other, whether it's reversals or momentum or position, you guys will not understand it. So you need to execute. And then after you execute, you go back and say, okay, tama ba ginawa ko hindi? Kaya ko ba ulitin to hindi? Nasaktan ba ako dito o hindi? Right? You come back and learn, reflect, and try to understand, is this even what I want to do moving forward? Or do I just want to go and, and work and do, do a different job? Right? You have to learn this. And you have to come back and understand. Total na talo na kayo, nagbahid na kayo ng tuition, matuto naman kayo. Right? We're paying, we're paying tuition, we might as well get something away from it. Okay? Next, get feedback. This is why we have, we're even here today. It's because you, we can answer your questions. You ask us about MPI, we'll tell you. It's not like we won't tell you. Right? You ask us about this talk, we'll come and try to help you as much as we can. But amongst yourselves, it's still important for you to have an accountability partner. Find somebody that's interested in the market. There are so many people here. There are almost a thousand people here today. I'm sure there's somebody that's going to come out here and say, Hey, you want to be my accountability partner? Matuto naman tayo, sabay tayo matuto. Because you have to understand, the one most powerful way of learning is from someone else's mistake. Remember that. If you've seen someone go through the pain, you don't want to go through that either. Natuto ka na rin. Make sense? Okay, last. Make the necessary adjustments. Commit to the continuous improvement of your process. Okay, I've already learned my mistake. Do I make change? Hindi. I'm just still the same. Right? Natama ka, sugat-sugat ka na. You, 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 jump off the, you jump off the table, you break, your, you break your arm. The next day, ah, okay, jump off the table lit. Right? This whole process, you have to remember. The first time you jump off the table, you break your, you break your arm. The next time you come up here, you're not going to jump off the table again. Make sense? All right. Okay, so we're going to get to the nitty-gritty, nitty okay? This is what we call edge ratio. You will find, who, how many of you guys have downloaded the, the TPA, the Trading Performance Analyzer? You guys got it? You guys got it? Okay, good. You will find in one of the boxes it says edge ratio. Okay, edge ratio measures the efi execution efficiency of a trader. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay, I'll teach you guys how to 
calculated first. The first thing is your average win over your average loss. You don't know how important these numbers are. For me, out of all the numbers, this one is the most powerful. Okay, I know you big sabi neto. Average win, obviously, you get all your trades. You notice na, oh, on average pala kumikita ako ng 10,000. Your average loss, oh, you take all your losses, you add them up, divide by the number of trades. Yung pala, on average, natatalo ako ng 12,000. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, pag nagtatrade ako, pag kumikita ako, 10,000. If I'm losing, I lose 12,000. Is there something wrong with my math? So I'm trading, but every time I'm right, I'm not making as much money. Every time I'm wrong, I allow my, lose, my, my losses to balloon. Why even trade when you're not making more when you're right? Makes, you, guys, you guys get following along? Okay. What does this mean? Your average wins, you have to now think, how do I make my average wins increase? The average loss, how do I find ways to control it? These are two super important numbers. You have to remember something. The average loss, that this one, average loss, somebody on average loss. This one, average loss. This one, average loss. If you are using what I taught earlier, yung VAR, average loss should always be constant. You already have allocated the amount that you're going to lose. Tama? It means that that number should always be constant. You should not be losing more than that number. Isn't that right? So if you're losing more than that number, it means you're doing something wrong. It means that you got to go back and say, I broke my rule somewhere. It means that I'm oversizing somewhere. I'm not cutting at the point where I'm supposed to be cutting. That number should always stay constant. Okay, so we'll talk about this. What are ways for me to increase my average win? One, improve expectation, expectation setting through fundamental and technical analysis. It's a system issue. It means that baka wala akong sistema. I'm just trading based on someone else's tip. How do I improve it? Attend Juan as a seminar. Attend Kalum. Whatever it is, find ways to improve your um, your expect your 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 stock selection, right? By being able to select better stocks, your average win should also proportionately increase because you're buying better quality stocks. Next, utilize a trend following system to maximize moves. This is what Juanes was saying earlier. Trend is your friend. The newbies they ask. Well, newbies, which one do you prioritize? Trend following or range trades? Always trend following. That's the easiest. Next, use valuation to your advantage or closely follow calling the shots. Okay. You notice that the title of our tech trader summit is Trading Beyond the Price. The reason why it's beyond the price is because it's all the things that don't go into a chart. So it's more than what price is telling you. That means that you have to go back and do your homework. You have to go back and listen to April. Oh, oh, maraming trabaho. Guys, you want to be good traders? You want to be complete traders? You can't take shortcuts, just like any job. You don't want to be an architect and not Learn, how, learn all the things that you need to learn in order for a building to withstand an earthquake, that thing's going to fall apart. So it's important for you to always remember that when you're building any, when, you, when you're going to be good at your craft, you have to be aware of all the pieces that go into this, this, uh, this, this job. Right? You can't go, if you want to go in and half-baked, your results will also be half-baked. Undercooked. Tama? Okay. Average loss. This is honestly the simplest one and the only one that you can really control. This is really VAR. Okay? So set VAR before, not after. Hindi pwede after. 
set VAR before entering a trade and follow it with utmost discipline. I think that's like one of the most difficult things to do, is the level of discipline that goes into trading. Nagmamagaling kasi tayo parate. We always think we know better. Diba? You follow your hunch. You guys ever, you guys ever done that? Tawag dung bahala na. Guys, you've set a plan before you enter the trade. You have to avoid letting the emotions get the better of you and follow through with your plan. Okay? Next, do not chase beyond the plan. Again, same thing. Implement a time stop mechanism or selling when a position is taking too long to move. Guys, you guys are market timers. Yes or no? The whole, the whole point of short-term trading is to market time. Yes or no? So, pag bili mo dapat, gumagalaw na. Yes or no? Juanes is encouraged. Uh, Nandi pala si Juanes. Range trade pala. Right? But when you're normally trend following, you want to be buying on the break of a resistance. When it breaks of a resistance, that thing's supposed to move. And if it doesn't, did it match your expectations? No. That means that there's a problem. When you see a problem, you have to be a little bit more careful, and sometimes you have to cut those when it's taking too long. Okay? But really, you want to control your average loss, it's really through VAR. So take advantage of that calculator. I spent the last three weeks building that calculator and that trading performance analyzer for you guys. I want you guys to take advantage of it. Okay? All right, hit ratio. Hit ratio measures the stock picking efficiency. The other one is execution. It's improving your plan. This one is how good you guys can select your stocks. So the first one. It's the number of profitable trades divided by the total number of trades. It's pretty straightforward. Okay? So in the casino, how many here go to the casino? Well, I'm gusto mamin. Okay? What is the hit ratio in the casino? Theoretically. So if, you, if it's black or white, theoretically the hit ratio should be 50%. Right? Theoretically, 50%. Actually, parang dinadaya ka. No? Okay. So theoretically, it's supposed to be 50%. Okay? Did you know that on average, the trader hit ratio is actually less than 50%? So how do you make money if your hit ratio is less than 50%? I have traders that returned 60 per 50 plus percent last year with a hit ratio of 45%, with a hit ratio of less than a little over 40%. So paano nangyari that you, these guys can return over 50% return Pero ang hit ratio nila, 40% lang. We'll talk about it later. Okay? So number of profitable trades, obviously you want to increase this. And the total number of trades are based on the current market sentiment. So if the market sentiment is bad, should you be trading a lot? No. If the market, trading, market sentiment is good, you have to be participating more and more. Okay? So let's take a look at this. Ways to increase your hit ratio, uh, your profitable trades, improve mental preparation by following an effective daily routine. Here's the funny thing about traders. Powering kami. Like any human being, kung nag-aaway kayo ng asawa mo, hindi kaya ma hindi ka makaka-trade na maayos. Kung may sakit yung kamang-anak mo, hindi ka makaka-trade na maayos. You are human beings. We are human beings. We are traders, but we're still people. Right? That means we still have to have our routine. We wake up in the morning. We pray to the Lord. We thank Him for our blessings. We continue on with our day. We do our charting on a day-to-day -day basis. Juan is charged the entire Philippine stock market every single day. That's his routine. You guys want to be good at your craft. You have to put the time in. Right? And if something happens between, if someone gets sick, you have to be at the hospital, can you chart? No. Can you be mentally prepared to enter orders? No. Right? So you have to do what you can and be able to set that routine. And if you guys are not mentally prepared to trade, should you be entering those orders? Please. 
The market will always be there. You won't. The market will not change. The market will give opportunities every single day. If you guys are afraid na mawawalan ka ng opportunities bukas, hindi totoo yun. Every single day, there are going to be new opportunities. Don't be afraid. Okay? <clears throat> Track sector rotation and market cycles. Focus on in-play stocks. If you, tr if you chart every single stock in the market, you know what's in play. Spend more time to look at those companies. Okay? And the last one, lay down rules for stock picking. Fix your criteria. Again, goes back to the plan. If you have a plan, you can trade your plan. If you can't plan a trade, you can't exec you're executing without a plan. Okay? So, next. Avoid overtrading, avoid undertrading. Market sentiment. If the markets are good, you want to trade more. If the markets are bad, okay, mo pipilitin yung mga half baked. Okay? Okay, I'm I'm going to you have to remember and here's the sad part. I always use this, ano? Ano nangyayari sa mga pangit kung walang maganda sa mundo? I'm not saying, I'm not, I have no judgment on you guys. I think you're all beautiful. But what does this mean? It means that kung walang maganda, yung lahat ng mga medyo pwede-pwede na, nagiging maganda. Don't compromise your system. There's a reason why you put that criteria in place. If the market's bad and you compromise your system, you're basically compromising your trades. Okay? And the last one, seek to understand market sentiment and its effect on stocks. Right? Boss was saying it earlier. 10-year yields, how does that affect markets? Take the time to learn. There are multitudes of opportunities out there. And everyone's teaching, whether it's COL, whether it's Calum, whether it's other individuals. How does the peso affect what's happening to the world? How does oil affect what's happening to the world? These things are just as important. How does the trade war affect it? Okay? Actually, next year, we'll be talking about market sentiment. Okay, Jason's in the back. Shame to tuturo next year. Okay. Churn rate. So, dalawang ano pa lang yun, ha? Dalawang ratio pa lang yun, ha? Okay, this is the last one. I'm going to speed through this because I only have three minutes left. Okay, churn rate is total value traded divided by your account equity. Okay, so portfolio turnover or the number of times your whole account is utilized given a period of time. What does this mean? It means that if your account is 1 million pesos and you've traded 12 million pesos in this month, it means that your churn rate is 12 times. Right? Kung total value traded mo is 12 million for the month, your portfolio is 1 million, it means that you've churned your account 12 times. Why is this bad? Remember, you guys are paying commissions to COL. I'm very happy if you guys churn your accounts 12 times in a month. Kasi lahat, ibig sabihin, ako lang kumikita, hindi kayo. But I want you guys to make money, right? And you have to understand how efficient your capital is. Okay. So it's an indicator of overtrading and undertrading. Thus, it must be taken into context with market sentiment. If the market sentiment is good, if the market is good, you want to be churning more. If the market sentiment is bad, you want to be churning less. Okay? So it's practical to monitor because of, obviously, commission costs. All right. This is the reason why I show you guys these numbers. There is a break-even point between hit ratio and edge ratio. That means that if my hit ratio is 30%, that means that one in three trades, 30% uh, is three, uh, three out of 10 trades, correct. If my edge ratio is 2.33, I am breaking even. Ibig sabihin yung portfolio ko, zero. So if I ask you guys, if your hit ratio is 33%, or 30%. Tingin nyo, kaya nyo kumita? That means that one out of every three trades, talo ka? Kaya mo ba talaga kumita? If your edge ratio is three or more, you are making money. So it can be measured. You guys have to go back and measure your numbers. Don't be in denial. Come back and take a look at what, what your numbers really look like. 
Okay, so I'll help you do that. All right. Depending on what kind of trader you are. If you're a position trader, a swing trader, or a day trader, these are the strategies, okay? You have a corresponding hit ratio, edge ratio, and churn ratio. These are based on stats of my organization, okay? So I profiled specific traders, and these are what their average numbers look like. You notice the position trader, he doesn't trade as much. Nakita mo yung churn niya, 2.2 to 5 times churn. This is monthly, ah. It means if your portfolio is one million, if you churn, if you churn two times, you're generally looking like a position trader. Based on your criteria, what are you really looking at? Okay, so I want you guys to be able to have a perspective of what each of the trader types really look like. If you think you're a swing trader, that means that my hit ratio is probably anywhere from 35 to 45 percent. But every time I'm right, I make double what I lose. That's a pretty good number, right? Remember, when you look at edge, it's two steps forward, one step back. That's how you have to think about it. Every time I'm right, I'm taking two steps. Every time I'm wrong, I'm only taking one step back. Okay? So this is my trader. These are, this is an actual trader. Okay? So I termed him Hawakai. Okay. My, these are my benchmarks. Edge ratio is about 2.5 times. His 2018 average was 2.64 time, uh, 64 edge ratio. Okay, his hit ratio is right at that border of 45 percent. Churn rate about three times. Obviously, he's a position trader, and his total return for the year was 22 percent. Actual individual. When I look at it on a monthly basis, the, the first number, okay, so if I look back, uh, the first number, my edge was 2.5, benchmark, tama? His January was 2.7. Hit ratio, good at 48, returned 2% in the first, the first month. What happened in February? Yung edge ratio niya, biglang bumababa. His hit ratio is still good, but he's trading a lot. But his edge ratio is deteriorating. March, deteriorate na pareho yung hit and edge ratio niya. Should you be concerned? But if I look at my portfolio, break even lang ako eh. 2.3 plus 2.6, I'm still ahead by a little bit pag tinignan ko yung buong portfolio. So parang ikaw, in denial ka. Hindi, okay lang ako eh. Hindi naman ako natatalo eh. But if you look at an underlying numbers, something is wrong. So normally what do we do? We trade out of our, ano, di ba? We trade out of our slump. Sama ng panahon na, sama ng trading ko. Hindi, trade pa rin ako. Mawawala, okay din yan sa dulo. Guys, you already know something is wrong. You got to come back and take a step back, review what you're doing, find someone else to review it with, and learn what you're doing and make the proper adjustments. Okay? So this is what we talked about. Upon investigation, these are some of the factors that had affected his performance. Okay. The first one, FGen. So, when, I, when he was looking at it, he was looking like this was a consolidation breakout. Okay, so he's buying this, and then what happened? He, when he was gonna cut it already, he cut too late. So, his analysis. Got emotional, put in more size, obviously that's another no-no, than usual, so I froze and cut below my stop loss. I lost more than my intended VAR, which is 2%, and that affected my trading for the rest of the month. Remember, tao lang din kami. If we're losing money, our trading, succeeding trades get compromised. Okay, so that's one. Next, mismanaged trade. Bought on the breakout, what happened? Sold randomly, not part of the plan. So my plan was to be able to hold this issue, pero pagdating sa trade, ay, parang pwede na yan, kukunin ko na. How many of you guys ever felt that? Pag kumikita kayo, ay may pera na, benta ko na lahat. Pero pag talo kayo, hindi, hawakan ko na to, long term na ako. 
same thing. It happens to the best of us. So I got a little jittery. I did not seek to understand the fundamental reason behind the strong move. If I had, I would have placed a higher expectations on the stock. Okay, next. Market had already broken down, but I still executed too many trades. Eight times churn. This is our factor of be, us being able to understand whether we are over trading. I need to step back a bit when there's a significant trend line break. Okay? All right. So reflection and action plans. So this one is below average edge ratio. My review analysis, I oversized my position in FGen and lack of mental preparation in-house. My action plans, find an accountability partner to watch over my risk levels. And the second one is to create a template to use when researching stocks. Okay, so find what, what the problem is and go and see how you're going to remedy it. Below average hit ratio, out of sync with the market environment. Maybe I allowed that first trade of FGen where I lost more than I intended to, to affect my succeeding trades. Napipikon ako sa market. How many of you guys ever napikon sa market? Parang personal na eh. Alam niyo yun? Yung parang galit ata to sa market sa akin eh. That happens. But remember, the market doesn't know who you are. Pero feeling mo, out to get me to market na to. So napipikon ka. And then you trade more. It happens, guys. Remember, you are all people. That means that you have to control your emotions as much as you can to be more objective and follow the plan that you've set out for yourself. Okay? Last, above average churn ratio. I'm trading more than I should in a weak market environment. Okay? So by churn ratio, we can see whether or not we're actually over trading or not. So when there is a significant trend line break, immediately lower position sizes. Lower your VAR. Okay? All right, recap. So again, find your performance drivers, make a plan. Execute, reflect, and review. Get feedback and make the necessary adjustments. Okay? So, this is just the tip of the iceberg. What I've shown you guys is just the beginning. If you look at, you guys see the, the TPA, Young Trading Performance Analyzer? If you guys see what's on your TPA, that is just a, fa a fraction of what our actual analytics looks like. What else do we have? We have per setup efficiency, integration of market cap, price levels and uh, market cap price levels and other data points. Okay, and then obviously at the bottom of the barrel, big data applications, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Guys, we're just at the beginning. I, parang bigat na ngayong hapon pero ang binigay ko sa inyo tatlong ratio lang binigay ko sa inyo. Okay, all right. For those who still don't have the TPA, please download it right now on your mobile devices or on your tablets or on your, on your laptops. We're going to go through this, and I'm going to show you guys how to use the Trading Performance Analyzer. I spent the last two weeks building this from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to make sure you guys know how to use it when you get out of here. All right, you guys ready? You guys ready? Okay. Yes? This is what it looks like. Tama? You guys have, you guys have it on your devices? All right. Okay. Parang dami ng iyare, no? Okay. I want you guys to focus the on the top three: hit ratio, edge ratio, and churn rate. Those are the numbers that we're going to be going through. Okay. Those are the ones that are priority. So, number one: if you want to learn how to use this, you need to get your source from the COL ledger. Okay. This is the COL website. Do you guys all know what a COL the website looks like? I'm hoping you do. Okay. Because if you don't, our customer experience managers are here on the side. Okay, number one, click the trade, portfolio, and view monthly account ledger historical. Okay, next. I need you guys to input the month that you want to enter. Okay, click search, it looks like this. 
How many, okay, I'm going to ask you guys honestly. How many of you guys have ever seen this? That's like five people. Okay, no, that's a pretty good number. Okay, that's a pretty good number. Okay, this is what a demo COL ledger looks like. Okay. <clears throat> okay, next. From December 2018, which was the very last month of last year, I need you to get your ending balance or the beginning balance of this year. Okay? December 2018, now it says December 2018. I need you to get the total account equity at the very bottom, and I need you to input it on the beginning balance. Okay? Next. Same... Ledger. I need you to get the open positions that you had, you carry over Nino, and I need you to input it on the ledger. Okay? Date should be C for carry over. The reason why is because if you put C, there's no fees. You see the fees? It says zero. Okay? Because you didn't sell it, you carried over from the previous year. Okay? So you input these here. You still with me? Next, that's number three. Number four, buying orders. This one is more straightforward. You look at all the buying orders on your ledger, <clears throat> and you put it here. Good? Deposits, withdrawals, margin interest, which is at the very bottom, and dividends all go in those specific boxes. That's number five. Mutual funds, I know some of you guys trade mutual funds. You have to put it in the mutual funds tab. All right, these are the purchases. purchases. These are the selling. Okay, you guys will get this at the very, we'll be sending this out alongside the TPA so that you guys can play with around with this, okay? Open positions from the previous year and selling orders you also have to put. Okay. So what happens when you input all of this, right? What happens when you input all of it? The first thing that you need to do is you need to review the trades that you made and input your notes. At the very bottom, you see the, you see the green 17,000? Underneath it, you have notes. There's a reason why we put a notes bar there. It means that you can come back and review what you did. Okay, so example that we did. The first one. 17,405 gain. Patient with the move, A trade. Okay, thumbs up. Next. Sold too early, cheap pala. What does that mean? It means that we made a decision, but we were not fully committed to that decision. Right? The last one. Loss of 13,600. Breakdown didn't cut, dasal na lang. Okay, there's a problem. So now, why did we do this? What was the purpose of us doing this kind of review? This is each individual trade. Why do we do it? So that we can come back and say, Dito pala ako nagkakamali. I don't want to make the same mistakes again. Okay, we'll go through this later on. Next. Review the numbers and the ratios. Okay, all of these will be on the performance analyzer. The first thing you have to look at is, how much did I make? Okay, are you guys happy with this return for the first three months of the year? I made 4% return, 14,000 pesos. Is that good or bad for me? Am I happy with that? Mm, so, so, okay. So, what does resulting mean? Pag kumita ako, okay na ba? That's always a question that you guys have to ask yourself. If you made money, did you, are you happy with the way that you made money? So let's, let's drill down whether or not masaya kaya o hindi. The first one, risk, hit ratio, 75%. Is that a good number or not? 75% means that every, out of four trades, you made money on three. Is that good or bad? That's really good. Okay, next. Your edge ratio is 0.6. Is that good or bad? That means that when you made money, you made 60, 60 centavos. When you lost money, you lost one peso. 
Is that what you want? Yes or no? No. Okay? So how do I see it? My average win is 8,200. My average loss is 13,000. Is that good or bad? That's terrible. Right? That's terrible. So now you've gone back and said, okay, I looked at my trades. Which ones did, did, did well or not? Kita mo na Make sense? The last one. Churn rate of 2.1. That's okay. Right? At least I didn't trade much during that period. Okay? So when you're doing a review, it's got to be a process. What am I seeing based on my trades? Okay? And the last one. Note the necessary adjustments. MWC. Cut your losses when it breaks below the identified support level. Gusto mo ba ulitin to in the No. Next. Mega World. I made 5000 Maybe it was good, maybe not. Need to spend more time reading on the company. Didn't know it was still under fair value at that time. Yung pala mura yung stock, hindi ko pa, tin, hindi ko pa talaga naintindihan. The last one, AGI. Made 17000 great trade, stayed patient with the move, A trade, model for future trades. What did I just do here? Parang review ko isa isang trade, but what did I really do here? Now you have a mental model of what a great trade looks like. So now you have an idea of what you want to replicate. Right? By going back on my trades, I already made an idea now. These are the trades that gusto ko ulitin. These are the trades na hindi ko gusto ulitin. Right? You need to have that discipline of going back on your trades. Believe me, if you guys want to improve your trading, you got to go back and review. All right? So, pre-trade. Back to our pre-trade. Everything that has to happen before you enter that submit button. Understand your plan. Fundamentals, technicals, sentiment, and risk. What am I looking at? I want you guys at the very end of all of our sessions to eventually have a glimpse of how we look at markets, how we look at trading. And from end to end, from the pre-trade to the post-trade, all of these things have to fall into place if you want to really be good at this profession. Okay? Next, execution, trading your plan. How do I go about? How, why am I deviating? You notice even that trade kanina, nagdi deviate siya o hindi? Deviate din. Yung Manila water, nagdi deviate siya. Hindi niya kinat kung kailangan niya ikat. And lastly, the post trade, which is your review and the data analytics. Guys, I am giving all of these to you guys because I want you guys to really make money in this market. But unless you guys take the time to actually spend and look at your own trades yourselves, you guys don't know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. All right? So I want you guys to understand and take, this is my way of giving to you guys what we can in order for you guys to be profitable because at the end of the day, if you guys are not making money, we are not doing our job. All right? I know this is heavy. I know there's a lot of work to be done, but I know you guys, if you guys want to put the time and commitment into this, you guys will be able to take so much away from your trades and you'll learn so much and you make the proper adjustments to be able to do better moving forward. Our journey does not end today. Today is not an ending. Our journey is continuous learning every single day. Continuous improvement, and you guys put the time in, we'll eventually get there. All right? So thank you very much. So this is the link to the performance analyzer. Thank you very much.